Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zimbula. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at more things that are new in ZimCat. That's the latest version of Zim at zimjs.com right here. And we press on the cat, and we can see what's new. We've already seen the synthesizer, and the wire, and the editor. More synthesizer. Hey, let's do a polygon. So this is Zim Poly, that's new. And so is Zim Line. So let's do the line and polygon. These are two new shapes that are fun with uh, Zim. Now, Poly will make a polygon, so that could be, a, well, a triangle, although we already have a triangle. A diamond, although we already have a rectangle. Um, what would come after a diamond? Four or five. A, a pentagon, yeah, pentagon, ooh. Be careful with those pentagons. And a uh, he he hexagon and a septagon and an octagon and, you know, those gons, the polys. <laughs> All right, now this is a complicated one that kind of wraps around on itself to make this strange star shape. Uh, that's another thing that you can do with these. You can turn any of those into stars that are any amount of pointy. And if you do that too much, it, it kind of creates a double a double star like this and that's what we've done we're just animating that along along with its background so let's uh go take a look at some code shall we I'll reduce this down and pop into adam where we happen to have the zimcat poly example here so we're bringing in zimcat zero zero and down we scroll so we have a holder, and we're animating that all in initially, so uh, that will be... Oh, and we're playing around with the latest version here. So there's now a get latest version function, which will go out and find out what the latest version is, and you can compare that to a local constant called version. So each Zim that we launch will have version, and find out if it's equal to the latest version, if you so desire. I, you may or may not want to do that, but there you go. And here's a poly, so a new poly. It will just be like a shape. And this is the radius, 200. The number of sides is 8. And the point size is 2. So we can adjust that. To, um, that's too big. So that, that's why it's gone double points in a sense. Really, that should be 0 to 1. And if it's 1, it ends up being kind of like, well, an asterisk or something, you know, like a, just lines. Um, you might not even be able to see it if you only have fill. So right now we only have fill. And if you put this at one, that would mean that we couldn't see the fill. But if you actually give it a border, uh, red, then you would end up seeing a red a asterisk. Now that would be one pixel thick. That would be five pixel thick red asterisk. <laughs> okay, so let's just undo that though. Uh, so yeah, this wraps it around. We might want to just take a look at a more simple poly. Uh, why don't we do that? Var p is equal to, I think we've got p0, or p1, p2, but we have no p. So p is equal to a new poly. Pilly. Poly. I haven't typed in a while, so hopefully uh, it's, everything goes okay. And we'll dot loc that at 100. Well, I don't know. This other poly is pretty big, isn't it? But maybe maybe we'll see it at 100, 100. And if we can't, then we can always do an adjust. Uh, yeah, well, uh, F12. That doesn't look good. Poly is undefined. What happened? Oh! <laughs> oh! Ho, 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 ho. Who spelt poly wrong? I was thinking of poly the parrot. I did that on purpose to show you. Yes. Yes, that's right. I'm a little bit... <laughs> out of it today. <laughs> there it is. All oh, right, we have a border on the top, so we'll want to do that. Uh, and, and look, this is saying that Zim Cat or Cat Zero Zero Zim, that's how it manages, is um, the latest version of Zim. So. And what am I looking for here? Right, one of these guys, yeah. So there's a default poly. Let's drop that down a little bit more so we can see it better. And uh, you want to adjust the radius, maybe not 200, but we'll go to 100. It looks like it's a pentagon, doesn't it? Get that over there. Boop. Yeah, <laughs> great. So 
didn't we drop that down? But maybe maybe it's center rich. So we dropped it down another 50 and then made it bigger and it kind of stuck it up here as well. So the polygon center regged, uh, which means when we loc it, it's going to loc this the registration point. Shall we check that out? Uh, dot loc. The cir circles are center regged. Oh, not dot loc. Dot outline. Don't believe a word I say. Dot outline. I'll have to take a polygram. Ah, isn't that what it's called? A lie detector test? That's too funny. Uh, right. Well, that, yeah, you can't quite tell what's going on there, but there's the tip of it. Here is the center ridge, which much must be in the center. And <laughs> we just happened to locate it so that we can't see much of it. So we got this other polygon going. Okay, let's see. Let's move it over a bit. Huh? 120, 120, do I hear 130, do I hear 130, 140, 150, 160, uh, 170. There we go. We've moved it over 20 from the edges. <laughs> Woohoo, we can see it. Yay. But not too close so it doesn't get stabbed by this other polygon here. All right. So there's your basic polygon with the registration origin in the middle. Uh, it seems to be middled on the a box that kind of goes around this. And let's see what happens when we change the number of sides of it. How about let's go to six. Oh, are you looking forward to see what six looks like? Can you imagine? Here we go. Six. Okay, there's six. But just be careful. Polygons are sometimes tricky, right? It's like, why doesn't it hit the edge of that box? So what we're doing is we're making the bounding box as big as the registration. Otherwise, it's just a pain in the neck. It keeps on changing sizes and stuff. Or not the registration, the uh, radius. <laughs> Once again, take that polygram. <laughs> the radius. So we're uh, this is basically the radius in width and height. Well, uh, and let's see how to say that. Half, half the width and height is the radius. So the radius is twice. No, the width and height is twice the radius. There we are. Okay and etc etc now we can make stars out of that too so the way you do that is you change the point size so let's try changing the point size to 0.5 okay and this isn't quite an explore but we don't mind exploring a little bit isn't that cool so now it brings the point size in this actually comes from createjs createjs is what zim is built on and createjs had it all the time in its shape so if you do a raw Zim shape or create JS shape, but may as well just do a Zim shape, then you can draw poly or something. That's the, the graphics command, just like draw rect or draw circle, draw ellipse. So we've um, now brought this in and provided things like hey, we can change the color of it easily. It's got all of the, the features that um, the Zim shapes have. And uh, that's nice. OK, so there you go. That's uh, that's it working like that. And if you keep on changing this, it adjusts. Now what we've got there is one, let's try 1.5 for instance. Well, if we go to one, here's what happens. Just watch out. One, hey, <laughs> where'd it go? That's because it has no fill. Uh, we, we, well, I mean, it has a fill. That's what it, the default is that it has a fill, a black fill. If we want to change the color, that's the next parameter. So changing it to red won't help us. But um, this is the border. So if we change the border to you know, blue, well, how about purple? Uh, what color do we have up there already? Uh, here we go. Purple. And we can, uh, well, we'll leave that as one. One is the default of the, the border width there. But we'll try again now. And there you go. So you see what's happening? Um, if we have a border, we can see what's happened. It's collapsed on itself. So one is a point very pointy as pointy as it can get <laughs> zero is no pointy so it it makes your polygon poly, polygon just around the outside like that now what about a negative one do you want to try or a negative two so let's well maybe not that much negative 1.3 let's see what oopsie yeah, it's not a negative negative 1.3 on that let's uh, have a look refresh Cool. So it's making an outward star. It starts. It starts going outwards from its size. But you don't necessarily have to do that. It might confuse you because then the size isn't isn't covering it. But check out uh, one point three. Ready? Bum 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 bum. Ooh. Let's get rid of the 
let's get rid of the outline on that. We'll, we'll bring it up a bit. How about to 1.5? And not outline it anymore. Boop. How's everything going out there? You happy? You happy camper? And look at that. Isn't that amazing? It starts to draw these sort of like optical things. It's it's like the it's so pointy that it was here or wherever. I'm not sure. I guess here. And it's it's gone right past and pointed on the other side and like come back and gone to whatever this next one is and pointed onto that side. So it's making string art for us. Nice. And that's what this is right over here, except we tricked you. You see how we've got that border around the outside? Well, that wouldn't happen. The border actually runs across just as we're seeing it here. And I didn't, I didn't want to do it that way because I wanted to put the word poly in the middle. So what I did was made it have no border, but made two polygons or polys. So there's a purple poly and behind the pink poly. <laughs> Snorting to become a, tw a twang twister, a tongue twister. <laughs> um, right. So uh, the purple and the pink poly are both there and one's just a little bit fatter or maybe maybe it's got a border and yeah, it might have a big purple border and it's just sticking out let's have a look there's the purple 200 pink hmm. <laughs> I don't, do you see oh scale scale 1.1 uh, so we've scaled up the poly underneath we just kept it the same size and scaled it up underneath great so that's a poly um, let's go take a look at the line shall we i'll get rid of this thing Oop. Then pop on over to the line example, and we may as well go see that live out here somewhere. Dope, dope, dope. That was over this way. We'll see bubblings on these other ones in, in a bit. But anyway, here it is. Zim line. Whoa, lots going on here. Uh, look at this line. No, that, 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 that where, where, uh, there. Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. This line, right? Oh, I got it. Yeah, so we're showing that we can animate line. We're also showing that for all our borders now, we can do um, special borders. Like we can pass in an array of um, various numbers that will space the borders like that. Again, that, that was also already in CreateJS, but we sort of obscured it and we didn't make it available on our dashed lines. Uh, we, we had dashed, but it was one setting for dashed. And then we realize, hey, yeah, maybe it's um, maybe it's important to be able to do different types of dashes. So now that's supported in Zimcat. Basically, I don't know if you've noticed, but Zimcat is almost like a collection of everything that we could think of that Zim was missing, such as a line. We never had a line. We've got we've got a squiggle, which is a curvy line, but you know, and you can you can say, hey, make those just points. Don't don't make them Bezier points. Just make them points and you can draw a line quite easy or a bunch of lines with a squiggle but it's not really a line you know what i mean people come in and go i can't make a line how do i make a line uh, <laughs> we could always go back to raw graphics like the the, the traditional canvas type uh, line two so move to then a line two and we can build on a graphics a zim graphics uh sorry shapes uh shape my apologies to do one of those I've across the line when it comes to the number of mistakes I've made. <laughs> I'm too punny. All right. Anyway, um, is this driving you crazy? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you can't even concentrate on what I'm saying, can you? Because you're just going. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, so let's let's get through this anyway. Uh, there uh, we have these ends on the line. So we were thinking, well, what could we also provide for a line? Well, we have these ends. So this square is a custom end. Triangle comes with it. So does a uh, circle. Um, this obviously would not be your average end of a line, but it is an end of a line. It's a custom end of a line. Do you recognize it? It is indeed a poly. So we've used a poly for the end of the line. Also note that lines can have gradients on their borders. So can uh, borders of shapes as well. And here, if we refresh, watch this. So there is big and there we are animating the line. So we've made it so we made sure that it's easy to animate lines in a number of different ways. And that makes it quite helpful. For us. Okay, so let's go in and close this. Well, I'll leave it open. I don't know. I'll go in and see the line. Huh. All of a sudden, I feel like I can relax, have a drink. That's because we're looking at code again, right? 
I love the feeling of getting to the code, of looking at the code. How about you guys? <laughs> yes, <laughs> enough chatter. Let's get to the code. So we're bringing in, um, well, obviously cat zero zero again, and we scroll on down here. We've got some styles happening. We made sure that, of course, style works as well with, with all of these things. And we're setting some style, color purple, thickness 30, dashed. Now, just be careful. There's Here's this dashed stuff. And if you use dashed, you could just pass it in as a parameter somewhere in the line. Uh, somewhere along the line, there's a parameter called dashed. And you can just put something like this in there. We're setting a style with well, we're setting dashed as a style, and when we do, all the styles except pick, like not except, but a accept, A-C-C. -C. So all the styles can use pick, uh, or zim v, as, as you may know it, zim v pick values here. So that means if we passed in an array, it would pick from that randomly, uh, and, and it would just pick a dashed as a number, which wouldn't make much sense to it. As a matter of fact, it would treat it as true, and it would just turn it to a standard dashed. So what we have to do is make sure that when we pass in a style that is as, like a potential Zim V value, there's not too many, but um, there's some of them. Uh, corner corner is also like that. But uh, here, here's one corner can accept an array. So if we want to pass in an array for a corner style, we have to no pick it. And Here's how it's done. We pass in an object that says no pick, and then whatever's in here will be treated as not uh, being picked from Zim V. So uh, it's too bad that that's the case, but it's well worth it because it is amazing to use Zim V and pick in styles. It's just like, wow, so powerful. And on occasion, we run into this issue. And so here we are um, with the solution. However, back to line, there's line. So we haven't even said anything about this line. We applied the styles, we turned off the styles. Now there's a new way too, by the way, in Zim to turn off styles. You can say style, this is in Zim cat, uh, dot clear, I think, like that. Now it, what that does is it will no longer, from now on, it will not apply these styles. It's just the same as setting it to empty. For a while we thought, hey, just setting it to empty is fine, but it's sort of like, um, I don't know, a kludge or something like that. It works just fine, but people probably wouldn't think of doing that. So what we did is we made a style class with a bunch of static methods. These are methods right on the class that allow you to manipulate styles instead of manipulating the objects themselves. Because you can do a lot of really, you know, we hopefully coders know how to manipulate, well, oh, sorry, not all that are the styles here. here. Uh, hopefully coders know how to manipulate styles. For instance, if we wanted to add, for, um, if we wanted to add a group to this, we could say style dot, uh, where are we group? Is it groups or group? Let's see, groups. Or, the other one is called uh, type types. I think it's groups dot and some group name um, like big uh, is equal to and put in these squiggles. And so in here we would do whatever we wanted to size colon 100. So this would be like a class. That's a class. So we've just added a class called big. And then when we go in here, we could say group eh, colon big as a string, sorry. Okay, so that's manipulating styles through there. Now I can't quite I can't remember if it's plural or not. It, it should be an object with all, of all the groups. Um, now, did we actually have an object? That, so that's here's the problem. We, we actually don't have a groups object yet. See, style has no groups um, property, sorry. So we can't quite do that. We'd have to say groups is equal to and then in here, we could say big colon. So sometimes we get mixed up with that kind of stuff, right? Man manipulating, manipulating the objects so that we can add extra things to the styles. It's not that hard to do, but you see that I just made a mistake. <laughs> That's because I'm a little bit out of it, right? Um, or, or we could have done uh, this. Hey, at least we've now got a groups property. And then we could say style 
dot groups, and then whatever we had before dot big is equal to that. All right, it's just because we hadn't made a groups object within here yet to, to handle that. But now right here, we've got something like just style dot add group um, size and comma, oh, uh, no, sorry, big. Wow, <laughs> how's my brain doing? <laughs> big, big, and then it's size colon 100. Okay, so this then allows us to add a group called big, and here's what's in it without having to know how to manipulate the object. And there's a whole bunch of them uh, that do basically anything that you wanted to do with a style. And, and please look up as to whether or not that's group or groups. I can't, I can't remember. It's a plural issue sometimes when you have a collection of things. You, you may or may not use the S or not. <laughs> you may not or not or not or not use the S or not, not, not. Uh, <laughs> I'm just a little bit loopy. Hopefully you're okay with that. Uh, why don't we try and lock down though and be a bit more serious? Mm, okay. So all that was ir irrelevant. Uh, well, not irrelevant. It's it's extra. We'll call it extra to uh, the line. But there you go. And we just just brought it up because we had we've got some new stuff in cat, so that's bubbling as well. Alrighty, lines. Group big. Well, we don't have a group big anymore. And I'm suspecting, oh, you know what? I, I, I can't live with it. We got to go check the docs, don't we? So I'll hit the docs here. By the way, we hit the docs on that line. And look, it arrives at the docs for the line. And of course, you can read all about it. So the way we do that is on the end, we just say item is equal to and whatever Zim item you're dealing with, that will then come down here and open. You can also say items equals a bunch of different things with commas, and then it will open up the docs with a special box at the top that allows you to link to all of those things. And you can just go, go through them. However, we were wanting to check the docs just quickly on style like that. And here's style, so we've grouped style and the style class into the same docs entry. And let's have a look. There it is, it's just singular. So group singular is what we would have had to add there and type singular, even though it is gonna hold all of our types. So that type is an object that holds all of our types, like button, dial, slider, we can apply styles to those. Group is a, an object that holds all of the groups, custom groups that we make. Those would be like classes. So rather than have them all together, we decided to divide them up. It hopefully clarifies for you what you're doing. Uh, it also means that you're not going to accidentally make a group that's the same name as a, a class that already exists. And also in the back, it allowed us, in the back end in Zim, it allowed us to apply these styles in a more efficient manner rather than trying to guess as to whether we were applying it to a shape. Uh, if, if we did that, we would have to monitor all of the existing Zim um, keywords. <laughs> just, it just sounded like a bit of a headache. <laughs> so anyway, it also, I think, helps. Um, it, it's one extra step. You know, it's one extra indent, but it helps clear things up, I think. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Time will tell. So... That's all I wanted to check on now. Let's get back to what's going on with the line then. Boop, 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 boop. Props, dash offset. So what we're doing to animate that, we've got our dashes are happening, but we're animating the dashed offset by some amount and we're looping it and rewinding it. So that's what's causing this to move like that. We're not actually moving the line. The line is just across the stage here. But what we're seeing here is the animation of um, the dashed offset property, which allows you to animate the dashes like that. Very nice. Here we have a line uh, with 
thickness and what else? Oh yeah, so this line now we're putting the parameters right in here uh, using our ZimDuo technique anyway where we've got a length, a thickness. Uh, note that it's like a squiggle with the thickness. It doesn't have a border width. So um, it's got a thickness. Because does a line really have a border? Not, not exactly. And there's the start head. So we have a start, we've special, specified, <laughs> specialized this, a special rectangle as the start head. And then we're using an arrow. There's also a circle or a dot, maybe, a little, like a circle and a triangle. I can't, I can't remember. What, what is an arrow? Is it a triangle or not? Let's see what a triangle does. There's two, I think there's two names for each. So these will probably be the same. And is this the local one? No. So I'm going to open this up locally, open a browser. Yeah, so triangle and arrow are, are just that. Although, you know, maybe we would have wanted to make the arrow like just a line arrow rather than the full, you know, the full triangle look. But usually I like the triangle look better than a, you see up here, uh, left and right. You could do that with a custom head if you wanted to. But uh, there's triangle or arrow. And you also have the dot, or I believe it's a circle. Either one of those will pull up. Nope. <laughs> dot? Which, which one worked? I don't know. Uh, start head, cir circle, dot. Uh, I'm not sure. So uh, if you're not sure, want to see about it, we hit the docs and there's line. We scroll on down to the parameters. Here's the end head and the start head. Default none. Could be an arrow or a triangle. Could be a circle, <laughs> not a dot. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Somewhere else I know we had a circle or a dot. I think it was the dial indicator. The dial indicator could be a circle or a dot. Uh, anyway, not for us. So which one was it? Circle? <laughs> where'd, my, where'd my docs go? It was indeed circle. So if you wanted two circles there, like a barbell, no spec on the size of that. You can always just go new circle here and choose, choose your own size if you want. So we just we made it relative to the thickness, I think, or something like that. I can't remember if it was relative to the thickness or relative to the length. So it may, may change for you. I'm not sure. All right, there we go. Yeah, I, I think I better cut this one off before uh, it, gets, <laughs> it gets too long, before you end up leaving. It's never, a, uh, it's never a good feeling to have you leave a video. So if you're still here, that's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is... This has been a What's Bubbling, and we're going to do some more What's Bubbling of the new things that we skipped past there. So look forward to that. And you're welcome to come join us in Zim, on Zim, at Zim, uh, at uh, ZimJS.com. And have a great day or night. Uh, well, we'd love to also meet you on ZimJS.com slash Slack. We give a personal greeting to everybody who comes to Slack. <laughs> and we get an answer back from about a tenth of them. <laughs> So don't be shy. We're a real person. If you come to Slack and we say hi to you, say hi back. That would be nice. All right. Take it easy. Ciao.